Hi, welcome to um, a co-hosted webinar by LSD and Red Hat called Secure by Design, Containerization for the Financial Sector. Um, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us some of your time to speak about secure containers. Um, uh, today, we've got Andrew McAver and uh, Carlos De Santos from Red Hat who's going to speak to us about secure container images. Um, just please, uh, we're going to have a poll pop up um, that's just kind of to gauge the audience today. Um, if you don't mind filling out that detail, it's on the right hand side, the poll should pop up soon. Um, we're also, you feel free to, on, to ask any questions. Um, also in the questions tab, we'll address them at the end of the webinar. Um, and yeah, uh, please enjoy, uh, and I hope there's some value to come out of this. Thank you, Mac. Thanks, Sean. So, uh, Secure by Design, containerization in the financial sector, or for the financial sector. Um, uh, as alluded to by that, uh, that, that uh, meme, we want to always make sure that we are running secure containers, or at least an, on secure platform, um, because we've got lovely new shiny tech, um, but we need to make sure that it is secure. So secure by design, because security doesn't happen without intention. Um, as indicated by Shaul, this is a, a, a co-presented webinar with LSD. Uh, talk, we're talking about our LSD container, which is a fully managed um, Kubernetes platform. Um, the, I'll, I'll say it, explain it a little bit more as we go along, but one of the benefits really is that it's a, a batteries included uh, offering. It focuses on, yeah, cool, you have a platform, now so what? Who keeps it running? Who makes sure that it, it's working well? Um, and as well as part of that is, is working with LSD. LSD gets, works with you to, to make that happen. Um, and you, you have access to our team. It's not simply a, a, a faceless, um, just log a support ticket and, and have no interaction with people. We we really, uh, we've really got a great team. More than half the team are CKA or CKADs, um, and they and, and together we really do care about making sure that you get the best possible experience out of your container platform. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Carlos in a moment to introduce OpenShift, um, which is what we use with LSD Container to provide the engine, the the workings of container platform because as you'll see through our presentation and there's a lot more than just kubernetes to a secure container platform carlos uh, would you like to to introduce openshift to your, our attendees yeah so hi everybody uh, so my name is carlos uh, yeah from red hat uh, you're gonna share my screen uh, I'm just going to prompt somebody, or maybe Mac, you could tell me if you could see the screen. That would be quite helpful for me. Yep. Okay, excellent. Thanks, guys. So, morning, everybody. I'm going to introduce you to um, Red Hat OpenShift um, Container Platform. Um, my name's Carlos, uh, and I've been working with Red Hat for uh, just over two years now as a solutions architect. Um, Right, so, you know, Mac mentioned it, right? So security is not um, something that just happens on its own, right? It's uh, something that's got to be consciously thought about. And, uh, you know, it's kind of built from the foundation up, right? If, if we don't get it right at the foundation levels, uh, then, you know, upstream, when you start adding the additional building blocks, um, then things can start to get a bit out of shape and you, know, you can quickly run into um, you know, situations where you're in the news headlines kind of thing, right? So I quickly just want to introduce, um, so if you look on the left-hand side of the slide that you can see, uh, you know, it's the foundation. We've got Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS. Um, I'll delve into that in a little bit more detail shortly and, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, right? So our two flagship um, industry enterprise uh, grade uh, operating systems are the foundation for our Kubernetes platform, right? Um, and, you know, that extends across whether you're running on-premise, uh, on a private cloud, or even out in, in public cloud, right, all the way through to the edge. Um, it's the same operating system, same underlying platform foundation for our Kubernetes platform. You might be asking, what exactly is OpenShift, right? Um, it, it's Red Hat's enterprise version of, um, I'm not saying version, but it's our enterprise solution to, to a Kubernetes platform, right? Um, so, Carlos, enterprise, yeah. 
Um, when you say Red Hat's Kubernetes, um, does that mean that you that Red Hat took the, the free version of, of Kubernetes that's available that anybody can effectively download and made their own proprietary changes to that? Or how does this work? So it's a good question, Mac. Um, essentially, no, right? So we don't fork the Kubernetes upstream. Um, in actual fact, we are extensive contributors to, to the upstream Kubernetes, right? Um, introducing uh, the enterprise features that um, organizations need for, for a, a stable and reliable platform, right? Um, so the Kubernetes so, uh, that you find running inside OpenShift is uh, absolutely 100% upstream Kubernetes as well. So that means like that it, when when Red Hat finds security issues or, or possible like vulnerabilities, um, those get contributed back for the for the wider Kubernetes um, uh, sort of user base as well. Yeah, one hundred percent right. So often when um, communities release uh, in, into you know, that you can download and consume, uh, Red Hat will find vulnerabilities. Um, embedded or security flaws, right? Um, and we address that. So we take those back up to the upstream communities and we work with them to actually resolve and embed that into the next release, right? So uh, we don't actually, you know, avoid forking anything at all costs, right? Where the value really lies um, that Red Hat brings to the fore is uh, if we look a layer above, our Kubernetes uh, orchestration layer is, um, you know, the Kubernetes cluster services, right? And that's where the, the value starts changing, right? So it's no longer just native Kubernetes. Um, it's all the things um, that are needed to, to make an enterprise-grade platform uh, for large organizations like financial services institutions to um, be able to run at scale, right, and be confident that, uh, you know, issues arise, I've got support, I've got uh, the backing support from Red Hat as well, right? And a lot of moving parts there as well. So, you know, we obviously integrate all of these different um, projects and solutions or services uh, and verify and certify them as well with, um, you know, <clears throat> industry security standards, etc. So, uh, Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> Go back. Um, just something in terms of one of those layers um, around uh, CoreOS. Um, one of the the concerns, obviously, around so somebody running Kubernetes is that's great if you, you, you one is comfortable at the, you know the version of Kubernetes is one is is running is safe. But how do you make sure that that the thing that is actually executing the Kubernetes, the the underlying VM or uh, agent, how, how does one in, ensure that? And, and how does OpenShift help uh, mitigate the security vulnerabilities at that point? So back. You know, Core OS is essentially a um, read-only OS, right? Uh, so often referred to as immutable infrastructure as well, uh, and and that's a you know a sterling building block for for solution like um, Kubernetes, right? So in the sense that if it's read-only and immutable, um, you know you can't really make mistakes um, or take wrong decisions, right? So when you're building the platform, right? So uh, CoreOS being by immutable by nature means, uh, you know, we've embedded all the security features that need to be embedded. Uh, and there's no need for a system administrator building the platform to actually manually add all components on and potentially end up with uh, underlying uh, node images that, that perhaps are different from one another or disparate, et cetera. So all things equal, um, you, you know, we've built in and secured and certified that image to be used with that specific Kubernetes release. Um, you know, that's a foundation building block for, for making installation seamless, uh, enabling, uh, you know, seamless upgrades as well, right? Because we're just replacing the entire image and we know what's in that image, right? Nothing has changed. Um, and especially from a security perspective, right? It gives us that good posture. So, Back to on the left, right? So we've got OpenShift Container Platform. We've got really three kind of editions. Um, Kubernetes Engine, uh, which is really just the base cluster services um, to get, to get um, you know, organizations going. And we've got a horde of services there that add value, right? Um, otherwise, you'd have to build them all on your own and maintain them. And 
Further upstream, we've got OpenShift Container Platform, uh, further extending with uh, other services, right? Um, platform services like uh, service mesh and serverless um, integration with CI, CD pipelines, cost management, um, and then we have application services. So that's extended out to our, uh, you know, the rest of the Red Hat portfolio um, to give you, you know, the resources to actually build and run those applications on the platform, right? Uh, extensive data services or comprehensive data services um, integration as well, and then you know the developer services to make the developer productivity really um, quick, right? So you want to avoid developers having too much to do it, um, other than actually develop the code. And our latest release or edition is OpenShift Platform Plus, uh, and what we've done there, we've um, again with a focus on security and ease of management, right? Uh, introduced um, our components like our, our technology such as multi-cluster manager, cluster security, and our global registry um, key, right? Uh, if I can quickly just briefly touch on those. The so multi-cluster management essentially is a single pane of glass to enable you to really um, get a single view of all your clusters um, that you have deployed across um, your data centers or even out in your public cloud providers as well, right? Um, it's got extensive discovery mechanisms, so discover and onboard existing clusters. It's policy driven, um, you know, it gives you that compliance, uh, governance and risk based compliance approach, right? Um, and, you know, the ability to deploy workloads to multiple clusters, all from a single paint of glass and observability, observability into um, what's actually happening in those clusters and how they are performing, right? So that's essentially the multi-cluster management component. Um, if we look at the cluster security, so advanced cluster security, um, it was a recent acquisition of StackRox, um, and Red Hat is now in the process of actually open sourcing um, StackRox as well. Um, but it is already available to deploy, uh, and that's really Kubernetes native security uh, in integration into the cluster. Right? So giving us uh, visibility, um, extensive visibility from a security perspective. Uh, specifically around the Kubernetes realm, right? Um, it's a nice feature in there is network segmentation, um, and it's really built and focused around, you know, the build, deploy, and the run phase um, uh, from a lifecycle perspective, right, from a container uh, platform. And then key is a global registry site. So we need to have images that are secured. Um, where are these images coming from, right? So we can actually sync images from external repositories and then built in scanning capabilities to look at um, those images and the components that are embedded in the images or packages rather uh, and give you a visibility into, you know, how, how secure are these images, uh, are there known exploits built into these images, etc. cetera. Um, so all built around you know, multiple clusters um, and having a holistic view and management from now uh, let's say Kubernetes or OpenShift at scale, right? Thanks, Carlos. Um, so Thanks, from that, obviously, you uh, OpenShift is 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 addressing the the an end-to-end -end solution rather than simply a a piece uh, of of oh here's a place to run your containers. Uh, with with OpenShift Platform Plus, you you're providing additional security, especially obviously for the focus of today, additional security yeah. in, enhancements um, to to provide the visibility back to to business about what is going on, what am I running, how secure is it. Um, uh, as part of the LSD trip, uh, which uh, we we also look at. Um, helping uh, developers from the beginning in terms of their code processes, in terms of the code they're writing and doing vulnerability scans on the code themselves before it gets built into an image. Um, but once they build that code into an image, that image is then uh, pushed into the registry like key, which then um, gives, a, gives reporting um, to, to, to users as to how, how that would, um, how, how secure the application is at, or how secure the libraries and applications in that container image are. And I'm just going to share uh, a tab for a second just to give a, an idea of what that looks like quickly. Um, it's just a quick uh, browse of key.io. Um, and again, the reporting on here's an image that is stored here, and um, and these are the, the potential issues with that. So that's uh, just to give a quick 
quick uh, moment of access there for a second. Uh, Shaul, if I can ask you to to share our um, our slide four, please. Oh, so, slide five, please. Um, so we've got secure container images, talking about secure code, um, but we also need to, uh, sorry, slide seven, <laughs> we're jumping up pretty quickly along, uh, secure our data at rest. Um, and once again, uh, with LSD container, um, we help you make use of uh, encrypted storage, uh, either using something like uh, OpenShift's container storage, OCS, which allows you to have in encrypted storage on-prem, uh, or potentially other uh, cloud provider storages with the, the available encryption with that, uh, so that you can be sure that not only is your ingress and egress of traffic to your to your applications secured, uh, but it's the any persistent data that it stores as part of the, the, the container process uh, will also be be secured. Um, there's obviously there's several more features around container security uh, that, that we're not specifically going to address, um, uh, but that includes things like uh, image signing and things like that from a you know verifying where that image itself came from. Um, and then slide eight, show really secret secrets. So. Uh, I've seen most of the people here on our on our webinar today are um, fairly technical, um, so they will all know that that uh, Kubernetes secrets are not really secret, um, <laughs> and um, it's but because of the way Kubernetes works, um, it's it's pluggable, um, and we can leverage and extend uh, the functionality of those things to make use of um, uh, sealed secrets, for example. Uh, or uh, other tooling such as Vault, uh, and integrate those things so that when your application needs to um, obtain sensitive information or um, save sen uh, in terms of, for example, in, you know, database connection streams and those kind of things can be saved in a really secret secret. So, so that's also kind of important because you don't want that information lying around clear text to be able to be be leaked anywhere. Um, so. Over to, to just slide nine for a second. Um, as I mentioned before, with LSD container, we, we really are aiming to be a batteries included, um, fully managed uh, Kubernetes offering. Um, so where there are other uh, cloud provided uh, offerings that offer themselves as managed Kubernetes, um, typically that is limited basically to the sense of We'll make sure they'll make sure that the Kubernetes platform exists. Um, whereas in the case of LSD Container, we're making sure not only is it running, but we're, we're giving monitoring, alerting. Uh, we're in communication with you, um, working with your team, uh, even at the point of applications and helping to troubleshoot why applications themselves are, are not, are not uh, working well. So if I pause for a second here and say, great, so now we've got. Uh, We've got access to this. How um, can a how can a business see uh, what is what is going on in terms of uh, Carlos? You mentioned you know that that there's visibility that OpenShift provides um, in terms of the monitoring. How how does the so how does a how does a, a business see that? You know, is that just there, or how do how do they how do they get visibility on that? All right, let me share my screen again. Uh, hopefully sharing the right one. Can you see my screen? That's a yes, excellent. All right, so, you know, this is uh, the OpenShift um, overview dashboard, right? Um, it gives you a quick snapshot of what your cluster state looks like. Right? Uh, and gives you some cluster utilization metrics as well, right? So uh, this is a single open cluster. Um, advanced cluster manager obviously gives you a similar dashboard, but, but across multiple clusters. So one of the nice things I'd like to point out here is OpenShift now is integrated into our insights, right? So essentially, the cluster reports itself into our uh, insights portal, right? So that's uh, cloud.reddit.com. And immediately we can see um, from a cluster perspective um, some of the key um, risk elements, right? Um, you can see I've got one issue at the moment, which is rated as moderate, right? You can see there's critical and important um, uh, items as well. 
So with this capability, really, you know, as an administrator, you or even a business user, right? It's, it's got view access to the console. You get a quick snapshot of do I have any really um, alarming issues that I need to go and address immediately, right? And you can take action from there. Um, if we then look uh, at from a monitoring perspective itself, uh, you know, we've got Prometheus Alert Manager uh, that is, you know, part and parcel of the OpenShift platform. Uh, and it really comes with a pre-built number of alerts um, to, to flag, um, you know, issues on the cluster as well. And those also rank by severity. And you can see uh, I've got one firing at the moment. It's telling, you know, you've got upgrades available, et cetera, right? Um, it's, it's not unusual that you can get some false positives. So you may want to silence those as well. Uh, and you can have a look at the custom alert rules uh, that are defined as well and you know, alter them or maybe even create uh, your own. Um, Prometheus is used to collect all our metrics, right? Um, we've got some custom reports available that you can quickly query and run against Prometheus um, and basically then, then render that information. Um, and I have to quickly move along onto the actual dashboards. It's built from Grafana, right? Um, you know, you get a quick view as well of, you know, what's happening in my cluster. Let's have a look at etcd, for example, um, quite an important service inside an OpenShift cluster. And you want to know that all your etcd instances are up and running and how they're performing, et cetera, right? You can also branch out to the actual Grafana interface, right? Uh, and get um, custom uh, reports there or graphs or images, et cetera, right? And I, this image or specifically is looking at my actual individual node utilization, right? And I can flip to, to different nodes and see what's happening with those nodes as well. Um, and if I can just go back to slides, maybe I want to touch on one more thing. So we touched on uh, monitoring. The uh, other one is quite important is, um, you know, having observability and understanding what our built-in logging stack is capable of, right? So present that slide up quickly and share with you what it is that we've got built into that stack, right? So from a logging perspective, um, OpenShift, you know, is capable of logging. Or, uh, using um, logging application logs, right, and um, scraping application logs, as well as in, uh, you know, infrastructure logs from the OpenShift infrastructure, as well as if you enable audit D on your nodes, so we can capture those auditable events as well, right? Uh, and we deploy uh, Reddit OpenShift logging, it's done through, a, through an operator, uh, and essentially that will deploy Elasticsearch, Fluent D, and Kibana, right? So Elasticsearch being uh, the analytics engine to, to where we store the logs. Fluent um, is basically the agent that sits on all the nodes and collects all the logs for us. And then to be able to visualize those logs and get access um, and understand what's going on uh, from a log perspective uh, and visualize that, you know, we have Kibana as a, the UI for that, right? From an access control perspective, uh, administrator obviously has access to all the logs. But then individual projects would only be able to see, um, get access to their individual logs, right? So uh, at no point will uh, one project be able to, to have a look at the other project's logs unless they've explicitly been given access to do so. We also often that's find that, yeah, I mean, you can because, use it all yeah. those. So that's, that kind of thing yeah. is exactly right. So um, from that perspective, you've got that, that uh, coverage of, of uh, data sensitivity and who has access to the data um, by simply using the same kind of uh, project-based uh, role-based access and control that is already in use in OpenShift in other in other parts of OpenShift. So it's it's not another set of controls that have to be separately managed and separately handled. By you're able to to do that effectively in one place. Correct, right? So through things like single sign-on, right? And you, know, you often find organizations have an existing um, environment where they want to consolidate all their logs. Um, and with OpenShift, you've got the ability then uh, via a log forwarder to actually ship those logs off to an external Elasticsearch, for example, or, or Splunk or Kafka, right? Um, so those features uh, are there built um, into the platform and ready to be consumed um, with, obviously, you know, security in mind, right? Um, you touched on um, storage, right? You mentioned secure storage and keys and secrets, etc. 
um, say yes with uh, OCS, which is now being uh, rebranded to OpenShift Data Foundation. Um, we've introduced those features as well, right? Where you can now store your keys in the HashiCorp vault um, for your encryption and encrypt the entire storage cluster, right? Um, and if you're gathering like order type logs, like through order D, then those types of logs you want to store in an encrypted store um, and make sure that any of the relevant people have access to actually view those, those logs, etc. Thanks, Carlos. Um, yeah, as part of LSD container, one of the things we would, would often help uh, our customers do is, is uh, to hook up their, their audit events to their existing SIEM type uh, SIEM, um, solution. Um, as you say, that OpenShift provides the ability to forward that data as, as relevant, um, but it's already by default, even with what comes with OpenShift itself, there is already good security around the sensitive data and who has access to that information. Um, while we talk about, you know, events and things like that, most of, of our customers won't be running a, you know, just their own applications on the container platform. They probably have some third party applications, things like AppDynamics or Dynatrace. Um, so in as much as we want to have our own applications secure, how do we get a confidence that a, an ISV, that you know, a third party that we're making use of to provide functionality, how do we know the state of that uh, security of, of those container images that you know that were are running additional services on on the platform? Can, can you give some information around that? Yeah, it's a good point, right? Um, so where do we get our images from? We've spoken about key where we want to store our images and potentially scan them and have good visibility of you know our private repository right but where do we start so do we build these images from scratch uh maybe um but you know with the subscription to to open shift um you get access to a, a whole bunch of i'm going to use bunch it's a catalog of certified container images right which are both provided by reddit as well as uh, third parties or partners i'd rather like to call them right um, so if you head over to access.redout.com, um, you'll see that there's a containers button at the top of the page, and that brings you to this container image catalog, right? Uh, we've got a lot of category base, so you can drill down into individual categories or maybe just run a search, um, and I'll run a search for Dynatrace. Let's see what we get, right? Um, all right, hope the internet plays nice. So there we go. So We've got a number of images that have obviously been provided by Dynatrace, um, certified by themselves, and obviously together with Red Hat, then we publish them here for consumption. Now, if you drill down into that image, uh, and this is a particular one for the one agent, if you look on the right-hand side here, you can see that when it was published, um, is it generally available? And there's a health index, right? Um, and I'll, I'll show that health index in, in a short while as well. Description of the image, um, etc. Uh, right. You look, have a the security posture of this image. So the health index is sitting at A, and there's various gradings. Um, I think I have that page opened up here. So you can have a read around. You know, how do we grade these images, etc. Um, so you get an idea of what each grade means, um, and you know, you clearly understand uh, from a security perspective, um, is that image something I would consume and use as is, or potentially, you know, maybe not right now, um, or is there something I need to do for it, right? And if, yeah, you can go and grab that image, um, have a look at the packages that are built into that image. So, you know, you don't have to build these things from scratch on your own, right? Um, Red Hat is really trying to pull out all the stops, uh, not only with ourselves, but, you know, working with partners. Uh, to make content available um, and easy to consume so developers can actually you know do what they need to do develop code and, and know that you know the things that they're pulling from uh, our Red Hat catalog containers is secure right um, they're not having to worry to build it themselves i do see i see a suggestion from Heike to, to talk about operators um, and um, that's something that is that is available as a, a Kubernetes feature that Red Hat has been kind of very kind of strongly uh, part of the development of. 
um, which 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 can potentially address the life cycle of an of, a, of an application or set of applications, um, and that's particularly valuable when there's uh, in uh, ISV's uh, partner software that that's being consumed because it allows um, updates and ongoing patching from from of that the the software vendor's own um, software as well uh, within the within the life cycle of the application. So it does make um, it make it uh, easier and, and definitely simpler from a from a, a business perspective, from a an opera, from a, a user's perspective to say, well, is it still safe? Yes, I know I'm getting updates and those things are being applied, or at least I'm the very least I'm being notified that there is an update available for not only OpenShift itself, but for some operators that are uh, in, installed in the platform. Um, Absolutely. Just, um, yeah. Carry on. I wanted to double check if there was any questions uh, from from our audience today. Um, I'm not seeing anything else yet. Um, in which case, uh, I'm ready to to just give a, an overview of LSD Container. If uh, Carlos, if there's uh, anything else you wanted to go first, you can just uh, let me know. No, just maybe wanted to just add to to the operator hub, right? Uh, it's available right from the Opera of console. Um, and exactly what you mentioned, right? It's not just Red Hat content, it's ISVs as well that are building operators now. Um, and in a sense, if I can quickly explain operators, it's, it's typically um, taking what a, a human would do, right, in terms of uh, what do I need to install uh, a particular piece of tech. What do I need to check that the tick is running properly? How do I restart services if they stop? Uh, and how do I update this piece of tick, right? Um, so all of that, as a typical sysadmin would do or an application administrator would do, that is built into, logic is coded into what we call operators. A lot of ISVs, um, as well as Reddit, are now deploying or making their solutions available um, on Operator Hub to be deployed on OpenShift as operators, right? Uh, and, you know, in fact, the whole of OpenShift Container Platform um, and all its components uh, is delivered as operators. Uh, and this plays nicely in, again, you know, security, right? Uh, we're not manually installing these things, so there's less room for error, right? Um, and as you mentioned, when operator updates available, it immediately shows up uh, in, on, on, you know, I installed operators, you could see straight away if there's an update, um, and you can push that update through. Thanks, okay, Carlos. Back to you, Matt. Uh, Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Charles, if you can uh, just pop up slide 10 for us. Um, and just making sure that I am slide. Yeah. So with LSD Container uh, and Red Hat OpenShift, we are able to have secure base images, a safe starting place for 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 the applic for on for the run times on which we run applications. Where, uh, you know, uh, Red Hat supplied base images that are continually vetted for security um, with most of the popular runtimes, including Java, .NET, uh, Python, Node. Um, we we um, then uh, the, build those things into containers, and then our containers then are sitting in a in a container registry like Key, which which allows that to be continually scanned, not only for the base image but also for uh, vulnerabilities in the libraries installed there. Uh, we we are able to to use uh, to ensure that that data we process if it is stored can be stored securely um, and sensitive data like configuration information can be kept really secret. Um, there is good visibility and auditability. Um, you can see what is going on and who did something, which again is very important for for as to who has access to data and the security of that, as well as obviously um, if there's any change any. Um, any applications start behaving strangely, which may indicate a security uh, issue, um, you can obtain those informations. At, as part of LSD Container, we, um, we we can do customized and enhancements on the dashboards um, that were shown through Grafana. I mean, using uh, industry standard tools, Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, OpenShift already uses the, the Prometheus and Grafana for its, uh, its uh, dashboarding and stuff. Um, we can add additional enhancements to those things. To, to add um, specific items that a, a particular business, re, business really care, really needs. And um, 
and then obviously in last point with with LSD container and OpenShift using LSD container you're getting the really fully managed um, platform uh, Kubernetes everywhere wherever you run it whether it's on-prem in the cloud uh, on the edge of your node somewhere um, we can help you with that and help to manage that help to integrate it well with the rest of your your business in terms of uh, the information that a security team needs the, the information the, where your application is resided um, and one of the things that we haven't spoken about kind of doing the webinar but which we'll, we'll do in an upcoming one is around how that integrates and how we do that with it in a GitOps way um, so that not only is our application code um, versioned and, and visible and auditable from that perspective but our infrastructure code and our configuration for how that stuff is also um, managed in that way and that any changes can be automatically rolled out so we'll do that in an upcoming webinar soon stay stay tuned for that uh, Shaul, um, I'd just like to hand over to you and you can uh, wrap everything up for us uh, if there are no further questions. Um, yeah, uh, are there any questions before I start the wrap-up? I don't see any in the, in the um, Q&A spot, but um, yeah. Um, are some of the moderators allowed to ask questions? <laughs> Heike, you're welcome to. Awesome. Um, quick question. So. Um, I know that within Kubernetes, you're allowed to run um, containers as root, right? And that's sometimes a concern as well. So does it work the same way in OpenShift or how would you do that? Maybe Carlos can answer that. Uh, uh, I can, you need to answer your own question. <laughs> 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 no, so absolutely, it's a good point, right? So with OpenShift, we, we absolutely don't allow rootless uh, root contain containers running as root, right? So we're purely rootless. Um, and that sometimes does, you know, introduce a little bit of friction in the beginning when uh, developers come on board from a native Kubernetes onto an OpenShift platform. Um, but, you know, they soon you know, grasp the idea and understand that, you know, this is actually a security feature and having a container run with, that it can expose root access on the underlying um, node. Uh, and once you've got root access on the underlying node, then, you know, you've got root access to everything else. So absolutely, um, OpenShift by default does not allow containers to run uh, with root privileges. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Heike. Thanks, Carlos. This was a good question and, and good answer. Um, I think that's also where where LSD container offers good value in that we we not only kind of install the platform but we also help developers kind of in terms of some of those adjustments that need to be made um, rather than just giving them an in, giving an instruction we, we we work alongside and we can can show how that is done uh, as well as kind of convey them the reasons why in a way that it doesn't slow them down unnecessarily um, business can still develop and 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 roll out their features in the kind of way that they need to, but with a, that peace of mind going all the way back that from by design, we are using secure containers. Sean, back to you. Thanks, man. Um, are there any other questions um, before I do the wrap up? Seems okay. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to, to um, to send me an email at shawl at lsdopen.io and I'll forward them to the team so that they can answer them. Um, LSD Container is part of our new solution set, um, which is a, a fully engineered and managed framework for Cloud Native. And you can learn more about it at trip.lsdopen.io. Um, I'd really like to thank Karina and Rebecca for your help with the setup today. Um, thank you very much, Carlos, for stepping in at the last moment and handling this webinar. We really appreciate it. Um, and Mac for sharing your insight. Uh, it's always good doing webinars with you. Um, and you can both you reach both of uh, Mac and Carlos on the email addresses that you can see on your screen. Um, I'll be sharing the slide deck and a recording of the presentation with everyone soon. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for spending time with us. Thanks, Charles, and thank you. Thanks Mac. all. Bye.